I am resisting myself from just picking and tasting. Mm. Hello, this is RG Enriquez Diaz of A Stig Vegan. I'm gonna show you an exciting recipe that is a comforting soup. In Filipino, we call this milaga, but to be specific, it's a beef milaga soup, but of course, a vegan version. The first recipe or the primary recipe is really the vegan beef, which you can use for other uh, meaty vegan dishes as well. All right, the first step is to get your vegan meat replacement. Here in the Philippines, there is a dried soy wheat protein called Meat Magic, about a cup that has been soaking in boiling water. And because it has been soaking for at least an hour, they have swollen up and also softened. If you're abroad, let's say in the US, there's the soy pearls. Essentially what you're looking for is some sort of dried vegan meat replacement. Also non-seasoned yet. You need some form of citrus, some kind of citrus like lemon or calamansi, limes, whatever. Even vinegar, some kind of acid basically. You can put some salt oil. Extract all the wheat flavor, basically the quote-unquote cardboard taste. If yours doesn't have that cardboardy taste, then by all means, feel free to skip this step. They're a little dry now because I've squeezed out the liquid it was soaking in. Now it's time to infuse some flavor. So I'm gonna do a combination of soy sauce and mushroom broth powder. And how would you know if you want to add more of these two ingredients, the soy sauce and the mushroom broth? You taste them because this is not raw meat. I like it. Oh my god. I just fry them until they're darker in color on all sides. You can also have tofu instead of this. If you're more into whole foods, then you can do mushrooms, like oyster mushrooms if you like, um, tempeh, whatever meat replacement you'd like. This is just more of like the closest beefy, shreddy texture. And some people, especially non-vegans, are probably wondering why the heck would you want your food to taste or to look and taste like meat if that's one thing that you're trying to avoid in the first place. Well, for some of us vegans, so not all, but for some of us, it's not that we hate the texture and taste. It's more like we don't like where it came from. So it's the source of where it came from. So if we can replace that to something more guilt-free and healthier, then why not? Like what my mom would say, she's not vegan, but she was asking me, you mean to say I can have this, but without the cholesterol? Then I'll write around this. Now, some vegans do feel like it reminds them of the real thing and they don't want it because it reminds them of let's say a live animal that they're trying to save so yeah you know some vegans do feel that way so it's hard to generalize us actually you see that really nice and dark now i'm gonna turn this off now i did not invent this recipe in fact you can find other great vegan videos you know, explaining to you like vegan pork belly and stuff like that. But this is my improvised version, sort of a simplified way. This is the beef part, the meat part. And because it's Filipino vegan beef or Filipino vegan meat, we also like some fatty taste or fatty parts. So this is the tapioca starch. And then we are gonna put the rice flour. So mostly tapioca starch, about one and a half cups to one half cup of tapioca starch. And one four teaspoon, this is agar agar powder. Agar, yeah, it's like a parrot. And that's for just like the texture to be more like gelatinous. And you add a little bit of salt. And last but not least, you're gonna add some liquid to make sure that they get all mixed up. All right. We are also going to infuse some refining coconut oil. Time to fry this up. Do you actually want this lumpy? I'm going to 
use a spatula for this. So just keep mixing there. What? That's our fat. You don't have to cook this thoroughly because you still have to steam. I know, I know another step, but it's worth it. The other versions, you have to like make a roll and stack them and... And what can I help you with? Once they're kind of cool enough to touch, then you can play with it or wear gloves so that you can go at it before they get really cold because then um, they won't stick together. And it's fine if it looks imperfect, like it's just smooshed together. Um, I don't usually mess with vegan meats, but sometimes just for fun. So the Buyalo style is you get a chunk here of fat and you roll them into a log press just like this. If you really want them to stick, then you can use a foil and wrap tightly so that they will really adhere. Yeah. And then you just roll around there. And just press just like a cinnamon roll. And then you can even put some more of the meat outside so that kind of resembles. And like I said, it's not as adhering because you want to wrap them in a foil very tightly. I am lazy, believe it or not, even though I'm doing all these steps and I would rather not foil because I'm ready to steam and fry. Let's go ahead and steam our vegan meat and I'll cover that and wait three minutes. You can stop there after steaming, but guess what? I also like to fry my fat, so I'm gonna fry them. You don't have to, but I want to, I prefer to, I recommend for you to do it. Might as well, you've gone this far, do it, you know? Uh, go the extra mile and finish strong. Done. You don't want this to be too crispy, otherwise the tapioca starch will be also crispy and you don't want that. Oh yes. There are many applications you can use the vegan beef um, in soups, stews, many many more dishes. So, but in this case we'll make nilaga soup. Alright! Let's make nilaga soup, shall we? It's super straightforward. You boil some water, about six cups, and you add some salt, okay, as well as mushroom broth powder or whatever vegan beef seasoning or vegan broth you have. This is the time when you put the potatoes and kabocha squash. So, uh, we're gonna put onions. Also carrots, so this is a very hearty, root crop rich vegetable soup. And if you have yellow corn on a cob that it's not cooked yet, this is also the time you put that in. Another flavor enhancer is celery, so I'm going to put that as well, about two sticks. I'm going to put some freshly cracked black pepper, so green beans. And at this point, you can also mash some of the squash so that the flavors will get into the broth. And another thing that you may not think of that goes well in soup, saba bananas. Or if you don't have access to saba, you can use plantains. And then last but not least, uh, once you have all the hearty potatoes, carrots, corn, squash, they're all nice and fork tender, this is the time, lastly, to put your leafy greens. So here's the apple cabbage. Some cabbage as well. Uh, bok choy as well. Put that in. So it's a 
pot full of soup, they're going to shrink. We are going to taste if it needs any more of salt, mushroom broth powder. Oh my god, it's so soothing. Now, this is simmering. So it's time to put our vegan meat. Do you want to see the shank? Okay, let's put that in. Ta-da! Perfect for rainy day, especially here in Philippines. Perfect for any season, wherever you are. I hope you give this a shot. I hope you give this a try because it's really worth the extra steps. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up or hit subscribe so that you can get more updates um, and notification when there's a new recipe. And it also helps the analytics so that we can produce more videos like this. Um, once again, my name is RG Enriquez Diaz and I hope you try this at home and share with your loved ones. I love making this for my parents. This is something that I can introduce to them that's packed with vegetables but something that is still filling and hearty that keep them full for a while. I am gonna transfer this to a serving bowl so that I can start devouring. So what can I say? Kaina? Let's see!